The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for uh, Tuesday, May 23rd, and um, today we actually have the the uh, account of Pentecost itself in Acts chapter 2, and we'll be following the, the, the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal, and um, we'll go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Um, just as a quick aside before I start, so it says when the day of Pentecost arrived, we have to remember that, as I mentioned yesterday, Pentecost is actually a, a, an Old Testament feast, right? So they're in Jerusalem for this Old Testament feast. Like I, I mentioned with the Feast of Booths, it too is a harvest festival, and it's, and it is, it's 50 days after, after the Passover here, right? So, um, so, so you've got this harvest festival, the gathering uh, of, of uh, the harvest, um, and God gathering his, his people here around the, the, the giving of the Holy Spirit and um, God gathering us together as his church by that same spirit in the preaching of the word, in baptism, in, in his Holy Supper. So, okay, when the day of Pentecost arrived uh, or, or was fulfilled, right, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, uh, everyone who calls upon you and your name will be saved. And we give you thanks um, for, for your salvation. We thank you for the gift of your Spirit, uh, through whom you have given us uh, the, the new birth of, um, of the forgiveness of sins. And we thank you for the faith that that Spirit engenders in our hearts. And we pray that you would bless us always to live in that faith and live in the joy of your mighty works for us, by which you have redeemed us and made us your own and brought us into your eternal kingdom. Bless us to live in that new life even now, as you live and reign with the Father and the same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so um, so I mentioned, you know, I talked about the day of Pentecost and, and, and the festival there. Uh, then it says they're all gathered into one place. And, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who, who they is. Uh, and, and, and it says in the note here, right, that they, possibly just the 12 apostles. And in fact, we have some, some kind of uh, exegetical context that would, that would agree with that. Uh, in verse 14, Peter, standing with the 11, lifts up his voice and addresses them. So maybe this is just the 12. Um, though the fulfillment described in, in verses 17 through 18 hints that the, the 120 um, the reference to the 120 is much more remote. You see that in, in 115. Let me let me reference that real quick. Um, so it, that says, um, in those days, uh, Peter stood among the brothers. The company of the persons was in all about 120 and said, brother, the scriptures must be fulfilled. So you got about 120 Christians at that point. 
So is it 120? Is it the 12? Kind of interesting. You've got 12 um, and then 120, 10 times that. And just an interesting correlation there. Um, you know, sufficient number based from the 12. Uh, St. John Chrysostom, uh, uh, he was a um, patriarch in, in, in Constantinople in the, in the 300s. Uh, Chrysostom says, was it upon the 12 that the Holy Spirit came? Not so, uh, but upon the 120. For Peter would not have quoted to no purpose the testimony of the prophet. So you've got exegetical arguments for both. Point being, we don't know. Uh, but part of the reason I, I, it's, it's good for us to reflect on that a little bit is, is one of the things I think we see happening here, and, and we could make the same connection to Jesus giving the Spirit at the, at the end of, uh, of the Gospel of John. Um, in, in fact, with that, we maybe would make the argument that this is more likely the 120. So you look at Jesus giving the Spirit in the Gospel of John, John chapter 20. He, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whoever sins you withhold, they are withheld. Um, that that's like it, like like they're given the spirit to give the spirit, right? So maybe the, maybe the twelve are given the spirit on Easter, uh, and, and then you've got the. Um, of course, it wouldn't be the twelve because Judas isn't there, but you get my point. And then you've got the one twenty here receiving the spirit, drawing attention, and then and then the spirit is given to Peter that he can give the spirit because we've got this this whole. Uh, reference to, to explaining what's happening here. But if you keep reading through chapter 2, Peter gives this magnificent sermon about, um, about uh, he's exegeting Christ out of the Old, uh, Old Testament, right? He's explaining how you look in the Old Testament, all these ways that you can see the prophecies of Jesus, his life, his death, and his resurrection, and then, and then the giving of the Spirit. And, and, and then it says that they're cut to the heart and, um, and, and they say, what do we do? And, and Peter says, repent and be baptized, all of you, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children. That's Acts 2.38. And, and so they do that, and it says, there were added to that day about 3,000 souls. I think we had that passage here um, a, a couple weeks ago, if I remember correctly. But, it, but it's good for us to, to reconnect it here to, to Pentecost, that, that, that Peter and the disciples are given the Spirit, that they can give the Spirit um, kind of in the office of the ministry sense. And, and when we say that, you know, when, when, uh, when the pastor is ordained, when he's called and ordained, that there's this way where, where the, the, there's this calling of, of the Spirit to be upon him. Um, you, can, you can think of, uh, oh gosh, I want to say it's First, first Timothy where, where, where Paul speaks about this, the, the gift that was, was given to you at the laying on of the hands. And, um, it, you know, there's sort of this understanding that there's this ordination that happens, but that the Spirit could be given to the entire church, right? This isn't like like only pastors, right? Because pastors already have the Spirit. Um, the, 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 the disciples believed, right? So that in, that, in that regard, they had the Spirit, but, uh, but, but maybe somehow they're, they're given the Spirit to, to give the Spirit, right? Um, that, that he would be distributed. And how is the, how is the Spirit distributed? Well, look at, look at what, what Peter does. He, he preaches, Right, it's through the word. It's through baptism. Re- be baptized and receive the gift of the Spirit, and um, and, and 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 notice that as we think about this, that um, this isn't this isn't disconnected from Christ. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of churches really emphasize the work of the Spirit, and and they'll emphasize um, holiness. They'll emphasize holiness of living, right? Which is which is not in and of itself a bad thing, right? We should lead, lead holy and godly lives as Christians. Um, but they, but there's kind of an emphasis on that uh, in terms of your own personal effort, perhaps. And and, and in terms of um, the Spirit giving particular revel- new revelations, right? Um, but this is... This is Listen to what it says here, right? So the the um, suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house. And they were sitting, in divided tongues of as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And um, you know, the, so the tongue being the tongue of fire, the speaking of the word through which the spirit works, right? Uh, I think you can this, the fire appropriately appears as tongues of flame, since the Holy Spirit works through the apostles' speech. Uh, in the Old Testament, angelic spirits were described as fire. Fire also represented the presence of God's spirit. For example, in Exodus three. Um, so then, so then they, they and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse four, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But what did they say? So it goes on in how all these peoples are hearing them in their own language. Notice the giving of tongues isn't like gibberish or an unknown language, is these known languages that the, the gospel can spread to, to all nations, right? And, 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 uh, and I just tip my hand, but look at what they're saying. Uh, 
we hear them, verse 11, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Ravens, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And what are the mighty works of God? It's exactly what Peter describes, the life, the death, the resurrection of Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, that we would be rescued and redeemed, as I talked about last week, rescued and redeemed from that dominion of Satan, brought into, under Christ's rule, brought under the reign of his forgiveness and, and in his power and his, and his mercy and love, most importantly. Um, thanks be to God. All right, so we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.